Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is WCS Athletics Director Darren Joins. Darren, as we begin a new school year, what are some things that you want our families to know? Well, the first thing is, is regardless of your age, regardless of your competitive level, lots of great opportunities to play athletics. If you're at the elementary school level, we have a great relationship with the Williamson County Parks and Recreation uh, Group and lots of opportunities to play there. Once you get to the middle and high school level, great opportunities for playing on the school teams. And um, this year, when it comes to athletic events, it's gonna be different. Last year was an unusual year in more ways than one. This year is gonna be different. It's gonna be a lot different. Uh, obviously, last year we let, dealt with a lot of protocols. Uh, that's possible this year too, by the way. Uh, we're gonna change based on how the times are changing, but we're gonna pay very close attention to what the CDC says, also what we're doing at the local level, and of course the governing body for athletics, TSSAA. We're gonna pay attention to what we have to do from that standpoint. And then when it comes to buying tickets for these athletic events, there's an easy way to get that done, right? Absolutely. GoFan, we have a partnership with GoFan. It allows our families to purchase those tickets electronically. Keeps it from having to deal with cash, which in today's time, that's a good thing for a lot of different reasons. Awesome. Look forward to enjoying so many different athletic events this school year. It's going to be a great year. Darren, thank you for joining us. For more back-to-school information, you can go to our website, wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason. Joining me today is CCTE Director Jeremy Qualls. And we're talking about back to school. And Jeremy, before we go any further, for those families who aren't aware, what is CCTE? It stands for College Career and Technical Education. And it's a program at the high schools that goes across 42 programs of study that includes culinary arts, uh, autonomous vehicles, cybersecurity, architecture, unmanned aerial systems, just to name a few. The thing I love about these classes is the students are getting so hands-on. They're really, it's immersive programs. It is, we're trying to get students a skill set ready for the workforce if they choose to do so or go to college. And it's really, it really is hands-on and immersive and, and you got autonomous vehicles and they're coding those things just like they are in the real world. And one of the, the coolest features of CCTE, I think, is the EIC program. Talk about that. Yes, the Entrepreneurship Innovation Center that's located at Franklin High School and it's an application-based uh, program that we service all uh, 10 high schools. Uh, 10th grade through seniors, and what they do is they come in and they take their ideas and make it a reality. They take an idea and create a business. And uh, we couple those with real life business owners as mentors and coaches, and it's really, really a neat process. And speaking of the mentors and coaches, you're actively looking for mentors. All the time. We, there's, uh, you can get involved in any level as a coach or a mentor, and we, we're glad to bring any of those people that are in business, in the business world, on board. Great information. Thank you, Jeremy. For more back to school information, just go to our website at wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is Information Technology Director Tim McNeese. We're talking all things back to school, specifically technology. And so, Tim, as we get ready for a new school year, what are some things that students and parents need to keep in mind? Well, Corey, this year, all students will be assigned a Chromebook. This would be a Chromebook that they would use with them during the school day. Um, they would take home with them at night to, uh, to do assignments and homework with and uh, to bring back the next day. They will keep this uh, device with them all year. And how long have we been issuing Chromebooks to students? Well, in 2019-20, we did a pilot program at four schools and issued Chromebooks. Last year was the first year that we actually issued Chromebooks to every student. Tim, do you have any tips for students and for parents in terms of making sure these Chromebooks and this equipment stays in tip-top shape? One of the best things that I can do is always charge that Chromebook uh, with the charger that is provided uh, with it when they check the Chromebook out. And uh, each student is expected to bring a charged Chromebook to school with them each day. Um, other than that, it's quite simply just take care of it. It but just take care of it. If you take care of it, but sometimes things happen and a charger might go bad or you might have an issue with your Chromebook. What do students and parents need to do in those situations? And, and, the, and they will, and, and we're glad to help with those problems when they occur. Um, every school will have a designated place, and normally it's the media center in the school, but they'll have a designated place that they can take that Chromebook to. If it's a device problem, 
We'll either quickly swap it out for another one or a quick repair to it where we could get the student back using the Chromebook. Now, if it's a software problem, we typically uh, recommend that the student put in a work order for those and one of the software specialists will be able to assist them uh, with that problem. Great information. Thank you, Tim. And for more back to school information, you can find it on our website at wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is Communications Director Carol Birdsong. We're talking back to school, and Carol, as our families get ready for a new school year, what are some ways in which they can stay both informed and engaged? Well, probably my most favorite way is through the In Focus email newsletter, and that is published on Tuesdays by the district. Parents, community members, please sign up. It's so easy to do. Just go to our website, wcs.edu, and you can sign up right there parents, specifically for you, is our email, phone, text notification system. So you'll notice this year that we're going to be texting you more than calling you. That seemed to be really popular last year, so we're going to keep that trend going. We'll probably text you and say, check your email. So lots of good information that way coming from principals, assistant principals, and from the district. Another tool that we're excited about, the mobile app, we've, which we've had for a couple of years, but it's really a one-stop shop for everything, right? That's right. We hope that you go to the App Store, just put in the search button, Williamson County Schools, you'll find our app, download it. Great information, lots of school events there. So parents, community members, we want you to know when that Friday night football game starts and we want you to be there. Also choral concerts, whatever's going on at the schools, the, you can find it right there in the mobile app. And of course, we're also very active on social media. Yes, we are. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Please follow us, retweet us, share a post. We want you to share the great information going on in Williamson County Schools this year. Thank you, Carol. And for more back to school information, just go to our website at wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is our Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Schools, Dr. Julie Oyer. And we're talking all things back to school, specifically elementary education. Dr. Oyer, as parents gear up for the start of a brand new school year, what are some things that elementary parents specifically need to know? Most importantly, that we're fired up. We're ready to have you back. Um, we know last year was a unique year, and so the main message that we want folks to hear is that we're ready to have you back in our buildings volunteers, visitors, we're ready. Do remember that every building has a different capacity and a different size and different procedures. So we want people to reach out to principals and assistant principals, but we want you back, we're ready. It is so important you mentioned that about reaching out to your specific school because um, the administrators at those schools, they've been there all summer, they are ready to answer those questions. So if you do have any sort of concerns or questions leading up to it, that's who you should turn to. Absolutely, that's the key. We want to make sure that you are getting the exact information you need in a timely way and the school level is the best way to do that. And you get to spend a lot of time in the schools, around the staff, around the administrators and the teachers. Um, Gearing up for this new school year, does it feel different? Do, can you sense that excitement? There's excitement, for sure. You know, people think that educators just take the summer off and that what, what our educators do is go to a lot of professional learning. They're in their classrooms decorating, coming up with themes, and you can hear it. People are excited to have everyone back in the building and have another great year. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Oyer. Absolutely. And for more information about back to school, just go to our website, wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is WCS Fine Arts Director Mark Kinzer. We're talking about all things back to school, and Mark, as we get ready for the start of a brand new school year, what are some things that you want our families to know in terms of the fine arts? Well, we're excited about our elementary music program and our elementary visual arts programs are turning into some normalcy for them this year. We're also excited about our choral, our band, our orchestra, and our theater programs at the middle school and high school levels doing performances this year for audiences. And then our dance program at, at Franklin High School is going to be phenomenal. 
those performances that you talk about. I know our families look forward to those year in and year out. Last year, an unusual year, many of those performances didn't take place. Um, this year, we're hoping for more of a return to normalcy. Yes, we are. And parents, we've got to be flexible as things change, but we are excited, parents, about the upcoming uh, expo that we will do with the marching bands in September. And then we've got a great event on December the 4th planned with the Kiwanis Club and the City of Franklin that will feature all of our fine arts students across the district with proceeds going back to our students here in Williamson County Schools. And Mark, talk about the fine arts and just how valuable it is for so many of our students. Well, the creativity element is super important. Uh, parents, oftentimes our students maybe cannot express themselves in words, but art gives them an opportunity to do that. And so it's important that we give our students this opportunity to be an individual and offer them these opportunities where they can express their creativity in the pursuit of excellence. Wonderful. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. For more back to school information, just go to our website, wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is our Food Services Director, James Rometty. We're talking all things back to school, specifically school meals. And so, James, as we get ready for a brand new school year, what's something that parents need to know? Well, Corey, what our parents need to know going into this school year is the same as last year that all of our meals this year are at no cost to the parents or to the students. So each of our students are able to receive a breakfast and lunch at no cost every day if they choose. Wonderful. I know that lunch is available at all of our schools. Is that the yes. same with breakfast? Unfortunately, no. Several of our schools still do not serve breakfast at this time. Uh, we are working on that. But currently, like I said, we have several that, are, that do not offer breakfast. So I encourage parents, if they want to know, is to call my office or to reach out to their school and ask their school directly. Okay, and going back to a school lunch, what makes up a school lunch? Uh, it's very easy. Uh, when the student comes through the line, they have their lunch tray and they need to have what we call three components on the tray. Entree, beverage, fruit, or vegetable they have to have a fruit or a vegetable. So they come through the line, first thing they can do is pick out their beverage that they want, then they get their choice of hot entrees, cold entrees, then they have a uh, selection of fr uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. And so basically they load up their tray and they head out and sit down and enjoy the lunch. And for those students who have a really big appetite and want a little something more, there's plenty of a la carte items. Absolutely, for the students that are still hungry, they can uh, definitely purchase a second entree or a, whole, or a whole complete lunch. And we offer a wide variety of a la carte and snack items. So the students who want to purchase those items to uh, save for later or eat after lunch, uh, all those choices are there available every day. Wonderful. Well, thank you, James. Great information. And if you want more back to school information, you can find it on our website at wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is District Nursing Supervisor and Coordinated School Health Coordinator, Mandy Thompson. We're talking back to school, and Mandy, as our families get ready for the start of a brand new school year, what are some things that you'd like them to know? First thing I really want them to know is that I have 55 very excited school nurses that are going to be coming back to the clinics and helping out to help manage communicable diseases and all their child's health care needs. Our nurses are fantastic, are they not? They are amazing. And this year, this past year, years prior, I believe a lot of the success to managing COVID was because of our school nurses and what they did and how they contributed. Talk about the illness guidelines, because I know those are so important. We've just updated the illness guidelines um, because they allow parents and families to know when it's okay to send their child to school. Yes. And you know, parents really do know when their child is not feeling well, um, but there's always that gut feeling of when you're not sure. So the illness guidelines are set up in a bullet point um, format so that parents can truly look at the different illness and where they meet criteria. And if you're questioning it, always call the healthcare provider. I know our schools get the question a lot um, from families knowing about medication and what is okay to bring to school and what requires a doctor's note. Can you talk about that? Yes, so we have a Williamson County medication authorization form 
and every medication that comes into the school, prescription, over-the-counter, emergency medications, everything requires written authorization. And then when it comes to prescription medications, it is imperative that they have a physician's authorization on file with us in order for us to administer those medications in the school. Excellent. All that information can be found on the WCS.edu website under Health Services. Thank you, Mandy, for joining us. You can find more back-to-school information on our website as well at wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me is Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Vicki Hall. We're talking all things back-to-school. Vicki, as we get ready for a brand new school year, what are some things that you want our families to know? I would love for our families to know that we are still hiring employees to work in our schools here at WCS. We have got uh, teacher assistant or paraprofessional positions that are available. We are hiring substitutes always, and we are still hiring bus drivers and food service workers as well. A lot of these positions that you're mentioning, great for families, parents who want to spend more time, be more involved in their child's education. Absolutely, absolutely. They um, are, are paraprofessionals and teacher assistants. They work, you know, very similar uh, schedules to their students, both, you know, daily and then uh, obviously the schools are closed on the holidays. Um, for the most part, they work the same schedules. And um, our substitutes, if you really want a flexible schedule, substituting is perfect. It's, um, you know, it allows you to accept jobs on a day when you're available, um, but then if you aren't available, Available. You don't have to. It's just really as you want to and as needed. And we we love to have our parents and our schools taking these positions. It just makes it um, makes it more of a community and, and fun. And then if somebody um, wants to apply for a job, how do they go about it? What's that process like? Yeah, all of our applications are online. They're um, under employee, under uh, career opportunities. And if you don't have access to a computer or you need assistance with that, we have a computer up here at Central Office and we're also glad to help you um, through HR, we can help you apply. So go to our website, you can apply there. While you're on our website, you can also find more back to school information. The website's wcs.edu. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Corey. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is Instructional Technology Director Kelly Wade. We're talking about back to school, and Kelly, as our families get ready for the start of a brand new school year, what are some things that you want them to know? Well, first and foremost, charge your Chromebook before you come to school, that way you're ready to go. Um, second is Schoology is our learning management system this year for K-12. to It'll be our first year for elementary to be using Schoology as our learning management system. It'll be the second full year for um, middle school and high school. So that's your place where teachers are posting assignments, um, posting maybe an excerpt for students to read, all the things about their individual classes. Schoology is where that's gonna be housed. I know another helpful tool for our parents and our families, Skyward. What is the difference there between Skyward and Schoology? So Skyward is everything about your student, where you enroll your student, where you might fill out a bus form to tell them whether they're riding the bus or not, um, where you're telling us whether or not they're gonna be checking out a Chromebook, all of those things. So the difference is that's really our information. Schoology is more about the individual classes and what they're doing in class. And then talk to us about the class link, the dashboard that we use here in Williamson County Schools. So anything and everything you need to know, it's on the dashboard. Every school actually has different links, um, but anything and everything, we try to keep it on the dashboard. So if your child is saying that they've got math work to do, have them check the dashboard. Um, just for example, in K-2, Dreambox, my daughter's going into first grade, that's what she uses for math practice at home. So even if her teacher doesn't assign something to her, I might have her go on to Dreambox and do some extra problems. Uh, three to five is Freckle. Uh, that's what they use it for their math practice app. Um, we have several others for middle school and high school as well, but that's really your one-stop shop. So if, you're, if your child is saying that they need to be able to access something, guarantee you it's on the dashboard. Great information, thank you, Kelly. And for more back to school information, just go to our website, wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me is SAC Program Manager Leslie Weaver. We are talking all things back to school, specifically school-age child care. 
So Leslie, for those who are unfamiliar with what SAC is, what is SAC? Sure. So the school age child care program basically provides child care to elementary age students at the elementary school. And is registration going on right now? Absolutely. So they have until August the 1st at 6 p.m. That includes current families and brand new families. So that helps us understand our staffing needs. Talking about staffing, I assume you're still hiring? We are. So we need both high school students who are 16 years of age or older that are WCS students. And then we also need people that are 18 or older to work with the children on a daily basis. My son's been a part of SAC since he was a kindergartner, absolutely loves it. Um, for those who don't know what all they get to do, what, what all happens in SAC? Sure. So we group our children by age levels. Um, we usually rotate in common areas. We might do board games. We might go into the gym and play some activities with them. We go outside weather permitting. And so we fill the time while parents are working or commuting to work. We try to make it fun and exciting and safe. And then in the afternoons, we offer a snack and we also offer homework assistance. Wonderful. So parents, if you want to sign up for SAC, be sure and go to our website, wcs.edu, and fill out that registration form before August 1st. Leslie, thank you for joining us. And for more back to school information, you can find it on our website, wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is WCS Safety and Security Director Michael Fletcher. We're talking all things back to school, specifically safety and security. So, Michael, as our families get ready for a brand new school year, what are some things that they need to keep in mind specifically when it comes to visiting our schools? Absolutely. We're looking forward to seeing a lot more visitors this year. And one of the most important things you can do is when you show up to our buildings and you need to get inside and, and conduct some business or see some students or visit our schools for any reason, bring your ID. Have it ready. You're going to press the button at the front door, show it to them, have that good conversation. They'll get you inside and get you where you need to be. Every single one of our schools has a school resource officer, somebody who's there to not only provide protection, but also to provide education to the students. Talk about that program. Absolutely. The Williams County Sheriff's Office supplies all our SROs across this district, and we're so grateful for that relationship. Those uh, SROs are in those buildings, keeping our students and staff safe every single day, and we're just uh, grateful that they're there. And we preach it year after year, whether you're a student, a teacher, somebody visiting our school, if you see something, say something. Absolutely. It takes all of us to keep our schools safe and secure, and that means anybody. So if you're at our schools and you see something that's not right, please speak up. Let somebody know. Great info. Thank you, Michael. And for more back-to-school information, just go to our website at wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Schools, Dr. Lee Webb. And we're talking about all things back to school. Dr. Webb, as we prepare for a brand new school year, what are some things that our middle and high school families need to know? Absolutely, Corey. As we start and get ready for the fall, our teachers and principals and everyone back at the schools are ready for an amazing school year and ready to welcome our students back. Um, one of the main things to know is that a lot of communication is going to be coming your way from the school principal directly. It's going to be coming through a call-out system to your home phone, to your email address, lots of information about back-to-school nights, open house events, uh, come meet your teacher. So please be looking for those communications because we are ready to welcome you and your students back to campus. And what are some ways that families and students can be involved? We want students to be involved in and outside of the classroom. And oftentimes our families, especially parents of middle and high school students, will think, my child's in high school, or they're in middle school, it's time to step back and allow some independence. But this is the time that we ask parents to really lean into those conversations and school activities. So be watching for those communications. We want parents on campus, but also we want students involved in and outside of the classroom. Academically, students will come home the first half day with a syllabus or course overview. The whole outlay of the school year will be laid there for each of our individual courses, school supplies that may be needed, um, the way things will be graded, an overview of the course. It's a great time for families to sit down together to look at the course expectations and just talk through what the school year is going to look like inside of the classroom. And then those additional communications about school clubs and activities outside of class, those will be coming at, in the month of August um, through club fairs and various communication through newsletters. So we highly encourage students to be involved. Great information. Thank you, Dr. Webb. And for more back to school information, you just go to our website, wcs.edu.
Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me today is Student Support Services Executive Director Maria Griego. And we're talking about back to school, specifically student support services. So Maria, as our families get ready for the start of a brand new school year, what are some things that you want them to know? Well, I think the first thing, Corey, is that we are so excited to see our students and families back on campuses um, in August. We have missed them over the summer and we're ready to get the ball rolling. Um, the other thing that I would emphasize for this year is communication. It is so key for communication uh, with our students, with our families, and with our teachers, administrators, related service providers, and I, I cannot stress that enough. And it's so important to be involved, to be involved and to be informed, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think um, we certainly welcome our parents to be involved in our school. Um, we also, we love updates. So for parents to reach out to file holders, to their related service providers, their administrators, let us know how your student has done this summer. Let us know, uh, you know, what they're excited about and maybe what they're nervous about for the first day of school. And then also, if you need a meeting or need to have a parent-teacher conference with your, your son or daughter's file holder or their 504 coordinator, uh, reach out, let us know so we can get that set up. This is a magical time of year, getting ready for school. I think back to when I was a child and just the butterflies and, and the feelings that it brings. It's still the same for us too, because working in education, we still have those same feelings. What are you looking forward to about this school year? I just cannot wait to see our students smiling faces on campus and to see them busily at work, having fun and learning while they're having fun. That's my favorite part. Perfect. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. For more back to school information, just go to our website, wcs.edu. Hi, I'm Corey Mason, and joining me right now is WCS Planning and Zoning Supervisor Allison Nunley. And we're talking all things back to school. Allison, as we gear up for a brand new school year, what's something the parents need to know? Well, they need to check their bus route information because it does change from year to year. And this year in particular, we have a lot of new buses and some of our drivers that were here last year have got a new bus to drive. So they got a new bus number. Um, so parents, you need to go to wcs.edu, the buses and school zones page, scroll down in that uh, bus route section and there's a link there. And you access that link, you type in your street address it gives um, the school zones for that address, plus the bus number, bus stop, and the approximate stop times. And if you do check that information, make sure you check it again right before the start of school because things can change, right? Absolutely. Um, as new families come and they want to contact us about needing a bus stop and maybe they've moved and we haven't just now getting that address, we may have to change our bus routes for that. Allison, tell us about something that that's, I think is kind of exciting. We have an app that can now track buses. Yes, our app Stop Finder we had last year where people could look at their schedule. This year we've got an added feature that they can go to the map, they can set up alert zones, and as the bus goes through that alert zone, they'll get a push notification. So they wanna set that alert zone up about five minutes or more from their house, not right on the bus stop. But that way they can track the bus and they can see it all the way to school or from school all the way to their bus stop. Um, they can also share this schedule with another caregiver or parent so that everybody that's maybe looking for that child on the bus can see where they are. Wonderful, great information. Thank you, Allison. And for more back to school information, you can find it on our website at wcs.edu.